Hello, everyone. My name is Brian, and I'm here with my lovely and amazing and smart co-host Shay. Say hello. Hello. And this is the first episode of Kink Noir podcast, where we're going to talk about all things uh, kink and all things that have to do with blackness and re- our blackness and related to that kink. And we hope you guys stick around with us for a long time through many, many amazing and interesting projects and websites that we're working on. So I guess the first thing we can do is introduce ourselves again, I guess. My name is Brian. Uh, I'm a daddy dom. I guess I've been in the kink life for 11 years. And I noticed um, throughout the years while trying to navigate my way through the scene that there weren't any safe spaces or comfortable spaces for people who were my complexion or black people. So rather than try and convince those other spaces to be more inclusive, uh, I decided it would be a much better idea to make our own space. And we could include whoever we wanted in it and make it as great as we wanted and as inclusive as we wanted. And so, Jay, you want to introduce yourself and tell them how you found your way here? Um, find my way here. Wait a minute. I thought I came to you with this. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. I was, That's say, true. <laughs> I was listening like, wait a minute now. <laughs> Anywho. But You're no, right. for real. Like, Brian has known that I've been wanting to do something like this for like, for what? You said years now? Yeah. Like, I guess we talked about this like Three or four years ago. Yeah, we've talked about it and we're like, oh, yeah, it's a good idea. And then, you know, we just kept continue like weeding (laughs) away, doing absolutely nothing about it. I honestly (laughs) assumed somebody else would have came in and smashed the game already. And the fact that it had the fact that I am not aware of it yet. Maybe there is someone doing it. I don't know. Um, But if they are doing it and they're not going to be doing it as good as we're doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So here we are. And yeah, I am new. I am a newbie. I identify as a little, um, I would say I've always been aware of the lifestyle. Um, I used to work in a sex shop, so I've been aware of it, but I never saw anything that had people that look like me in it when it came to kink. So for me, it was one of those things that that stuff white people do, so I'm going to keep it over there and, you know, mind my business over here. And that changed. And it changed because of Twitter. Honestly, it was Twitter. Yeah. And I saw um, more of us in the lifestyle and I saw more open conversations. And I started to relate more with some of the people that were talking about it. And it was just like, okay, so... All the feelings that I had that I've been trying to suppress to be become a better partner or woman or whatever, like other people have these feelings too. And they're like openly expressing them through this lifestyle. And I'm like, okay, I think I found my place. So for me, this is gonna kind of like follow my journey from being a newbie to possibly a veteran or I don't know where this is going to go but <laughs> we will see you will see just like me that's all I have to say about that yeah but the cool thing is that like you never really stop learning like, yes. there's always something new and always something interesting to learn there's always lots of self-reflection and introspection that needs to be done constantly throughout any kind of relationship or dynamic that's in in the lifestyle so I don't know if you could ever really call yourself a veteran per second. You can have more experience. You can say something like that, but I'm not sure you, you know anyone can ever be a master at it. There's always, always something to learn, which is something that I like about it. I'm always mm-hmm. meeting new people, chatting with new people, learning new things, and it's really, it's really great. It's very fulfilling. Yes. Um, so, on with the show. Um, is there a specific? Um, event or thing that you can tie your kink back into like is there a moment where you said holy shit like (laughs) i like this and this is different from what other people like i 
a specific moment no not really it's been it's really been a progression and me trying out stuff and it's like oh wow i like this i like this a lot i want to do more <laughs> that's kind of how it's been for me so like right now i say i identify as a little that could possibly change it may not change um but it has been a progression it has not been one moment where i've sat there it was kind of just layers it's adding on top of this i realized i was into pain somebody you know pinched me and i was like oh wow like <laughs> It was like, so I like, and I needed more pain. And so it just progressed into where we're at now. And that's kind of like how it happened for me. So I yeah, can't like, pinpoint a defining moment where it was like, whoa, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess for me, um, it started way back in Catholic school. Like I, I'm Catholic. I'm actually a practicing Catholic, but we'll talk about that like another <laughs> another time. But I'm Catholic and I went to Catholic school. And when I was in elementary school, um, the teachers still spanked the students with parental consent, which is weird. But I guess that's another topic <laughs> for another show. There's like lots of shows we can do. But um, it would take spelling tests. They were very serious about spelling. And so um, for every question or word you misspelled on a spelling test, you would have to put your hands up like you were praying and then the nurse, or not nurse, ma'am, um, but the teacher, none, would hit you across the knuckles with the ruler three times for every misspelled word. Wow. Yeah. And I remember I had a seat like right next to where this would take place because they used to take the kids back like behind a curtain. Mm-hmm and do it so you couldn't see it but i could hear like the sound of the ruler slapping against the girl's knuckles and i could hear them like whimpering mm -hmm. and back then it wasn't so much sexual but i liked it like i got like excited and i would smile like i was like oh, that sounds pretty cool mm -hmm. and so i really enjoyed it and so i <laughs> i had like a couple of girls that i would like hope that they misspelled a ton of words <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So that I could like hear them whimpering behind the behind the curtain, and then um, later, um, also has to do with being Catholic. But later, um, I was in the church youth group, and there's a black there's a convention for Black Catholics that travels every year. And this year, that year it happened to be in New Orleans, and our chaperone, who was really great and amazing and very progressive and open minded and um, she was an amazing, amazing woman. She passed away last year, but um, she decided that we needed to go to Bourbon Street so that we could see how life is outside the church. And so it was like 11 o'clock at night, which was like much later than my mother had ever let me stay up. And so we're walking down Bourbon Street and it was loud and crazy and there were drunk people all over the place. And I had never experienced anything like that. And so I'm looking in every bar and every club and every every store I could look into, I would peek into. And in one of the bars, there was this big glass or plastic box that was huge, like big enough for a person. And there was a woman inside of it and she was chained up, like she was chained up and she was naked and she was just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at it and all of my friends were like, wow, that's crazy. Like, why would she do that? That she, you know, that she wouldn't want to be in there. And then I remember like my reaction was so different from theirs. Like I thought, wow, like it's really great that she is, has chosen to like share herself <laughs> with us like this. I said, what a brave woman. And so, I got obsessed with it. Like, I just wanted to sit there and stare at her, which, you know, it's probably weird to have like a 16 year old sitting there and staring at you, but whatever. And um, that moment like stuck with me like forever. And I remember like going home and we had, we finally got the internet and I'd like search for a girl in glass box <laughs> in New Orleans. <laughs> and um, 
so that stuck with me. And then um, every relationship I had, had been in, I guess forever, um, had uh, like a DS dynamic, even if I didn't know what to call it. Like, I guess back then I just called it like the man being the man and the woman being the woman, which is problematic. And we'll, I guess we can talk yes, also talk about that another Definitely uh, talk also. about that. Definitely. Right. Yeah, Go because we, we need to. And it wasn't until I met my current girlfriend mm -hmm. 11 or 12 years ago. It's a long time, but um, we hadn't we hadn't even met in person yet. And, and she said, I have something to tell you. And I was like, oh, what? She said, I'm a sub. And I didn't know what that was. And we hadn't met. I'm like, holy shit, does that mean you're a man? <laughs> like, what, is, what are you telling me? So she said, no. She sent me a bunch of links and said, read all these and um, get back to me and tell me if you're interested. And so I took all night. I just read every link every website that she sent me so I could be as educated as I could. And even though I was really, I was intrigued and turned on, I said, uh, I told her no, because my mother had always told me um, not to do those things to women. Like she told me that women were whole people and they should be treated equally and with respect and kindness and caring. And so I said, absolutely not, which is stupid because she's grown and she, has the right to tell people or be treated how she wants to be treated. And because, you know, it's feminism and, and choice is all about choices. And but I guess that goes back to me thinking that I know what was best for her because I'm a man and she's a woman. And so um, after months of talking about it and months of more research and months of me realizing that I was an idiot <laughs> and, that, and that she is smart enough to know what she's talking about. And then also like admitting to myself that I enjoyed it and that I was intrigued and that I'd be into it. I decided to give it a go. And that was 11 years ago. And now I'm here. Now I'm, I guess you can, I guess I'm a, I don't want to use the word veteran, but I've been around for a while and I, I know a lot. I've read a lot. I've met a lot of great people. And spoken to a lot of cool people and done a lot of cool things. You're experienced. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel experienced sometimes though. Like <laughs> there's always I would never feel experienced because there are some things I don't want to know about, to be honest. <laughs> there are some things I simply like, you know what? I am okay being in the dark about this. I am completely okay with that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting because I guess back in like my sexual development, like we first got the, I first got the ability to like search things online. Like I was like behind sexually and behind all my peers anyway. Like I didn't lose my virginity until I was like close to 19. Mm -hmm. Even though like all my friends were sleeping on everybody. <laughs> if anything, <laughs> like I was, I was actually scared of, of sex for a long time. Again, that's a, probably another show we can, we could do, but I was I was scared, and so um, once I realized that you know it wasn't good to be scared, I decided to just get online and look at like anything that I could find. Like I found a website and I just looked at every video of every fetish and every kink that I could find, and that was some, of it, some of it was really horrible. <laughs> some of it was. <laughs> was really disgusting and really horrifying and really terrible yes you can go down a rabbit hole and you will end yeah. up somewhere like oh my gosh yeah i shouldn't be here get me out of here yeah. and then you go through the whole part okay i cannot unsee this what the <laughs> hell <laughs> you can go down a serious rabbit hole and i think one of the things that i've had to deal with and I would definitely tell other people it's like don't uh, what's the word kink check yourself like don't yeah. sit there and be like okay I'm not 
into kink or I, I can't be a part of this because I'm not into this right here because there are degrees to everything and yeah it just it is it really really varies because from me personally I think I'm pretty quote unquote vanilla what, make, what makes you you're here so I mean, but yeah, I'm what, here, makes, but what I makes you think that because I and I'm doing exactly what I told other people not to do is like I've seen things and it's like okay I'm nowhere near like one of the things I said up front I'm like okay do not expect me to go through the whole capital lowercase thing unless you're my partner mm-hmm. that is it other than that if I if if you're not my partner don't come to me with that and that seems to be <laughs> a serious thing and I'm like no I will cut right. you for that don't expect me to call you <laughs> sir don't expect me to call you don't expect me to call you anything unless we have that relationship together if not get the hell right. about my face <laughs> so <laughs> so that alone makes me kind of sometimes sometimes makes me question well how really am I kinky or am I just like a regular person like everyone else no like I, I don't i think you are but like you said there's 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 levels to it mm-hmm. like even for me like there are things that i'm like as a dom or a sadist i'm like really uncomfortable with and there are things that i just really have no interest in doing um even like like you were i guess we can talk about like proper address for a second like i am uncomfortable with people that i don't know or have never communicated with or have never like really conversed with calling me sir or or daddy or or master or whatever like i don't like that it makes it's too familiar like i feel like we should like know each other first <laughs> like we should have a conversation first <laughs> but for a lot of people like for a lot of doms or a lot of subs like in the lifestyle like they expect to be called that just because they're a dom yeah. which i think is ridiculous but a lot of people are in that and a lot of subs are into that too. Like uh, sometimes I try and do it by a case by case basis. Like sometimes I meet people like online or on Twitter or whatever, and they'll call me sir. Like just after they find out what I do and who I am, they'll call me sir. And, and some, you know, I'll find that sometimes I'm okay with it, but like the majority of the time, like I don't like it. I'm like just call me Brian, and we'll, we'll go. You know, once I've built up trust or once we know each other, then we can we can do that. But like for me, like those titles have meanings and they come with responsibilities. And I feel like if someone calls me that, then I'm, then I'm responsible for them. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't want those problems. I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't want to feel responsible for everybody. <laughs> yeah, so, like some, like some don try to collect the third title like Pokemon cards, and I'm like, I don't have time or the day. Like you're not paying my bills, you're not taking care of me at all yeah. in any type of capacity. Like so, why the hell? Like why would I? Like no, again, I will cut you. Like <laughs> don't. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've come across a lot of doms. I think that the title like absolves them from any kind of responsibility of even being a normal, decent human being. Yes. And so, like they say, I'm a dom, so therefore you have to put up with any abuse or any bullshit that I spew. And they're less like them's the breaks. <laughs> so, um, and I'm like, I don't like to operate like that because, like, I think the first thing I, I the first thing I tried to focus on when learning all these things wasn't like technique. It really wasn't like the history of BDSM. It was like, am I a good enough person to have this title? Like, am I a good enough person for people to respect me or admire me enough to give me that responsibility? And so like, I feel like I work really long and really hard on just being a decent guy. Mm-hmm. And so like when people like call me that without knowing me, I, I feel like, <laughs> I did all the work for no reason. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I did all this work on being a good dude. Like, you got to realize that first. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it, you know, that's what I choose to focus. And t- to be honest, like, it's, it's a system that hasn't failed me yet. Mm-hmm. Like, and every, every person, the majority of people that I've met over the years that I've been lucky enough to be trusted in their lives or for that step to be taken waiting until it feels right almost always works because it's easy like it's well first like 
I guess going back to what we were talking about earlier, like the the life can be really isolating. Mm-hmm. And like even in a big city like New York City, I'm from Missouri, but I live in New York City. And so even in a big city like New York City, like you can still feel like you're the only person who likes what you like. And so sometimes when you come across someone else who likes what you like, like your first instinct is to just like throw yourself at them. Yes, <laughs> like, attach on I'll, your mind. Like, okay, yeah, we, like, <laughs> yeah. I'll free your hand in marriage. Like, uh, <laughs> let's get married. We'll run away together. Like your mind was going to make babies. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and you're like, I've only known you for two days, but like seem things seem to like ex- be like accelerated in life. And so it's really easy to get caught up and overtaken by like emotion and, and ecstasy and, and lust and everything else. Mm-hmm. And so um, slowing down sometimes like curbs those things and just saying, well, wait a minute, like they're not the only person in the world <laughs> that, <laughs> that likes this. Like I can take my time. I can see if this person, but like, you can say like, I can see if I even want to be around this person <laughs> because, <laughs> because like sometimes you meet people and it's the only thing you have in common is that you yeah. both are in yeah. same kink. And so then like after like the sex and after like the scenes and the playtime is over, you realize that you hate this person's fucking guts. <laughs> 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 Which is like happened a few times. And so like slowing down and uh taking your time and realizing that there are other people who will like this it curbs down on like the heartbreak and the frenzy and the complications and it even like gives you the ability to just, like make friends in the lifestyle instead of like partners because you could say like well i like this I like, I like this person i like being around them but i don't want to play with them or you can say like make an educated guess and say like oh i like playing with them but you know i don't really I don't like think, the person yeah i don't really like them as a person but then like you can make those judgment calls like together right. when you're discussing boundaries and stuff rather than it being like you rush into things and then you play and then you realize that you hate them and then it's like an argument and a big falling out and yeah, it's just real messy and, and terrible so waiting for me is like something i'm really serious about that i always i always do like even even if like there is there's a couple there's a couple of, of subs like on what i've come across like on twitter or that, that i help out right like right. And it's rarely ever sexual. Like they're just people who need like emotional support or someone to just talk to. And sometimes I provide that person. And it's not one sided because like I really like feeling needed. <laughs> so <laughs> so like they help me feel needed and important and then I give them someone to talk to. Or like sometimes they just provide some structure. Mm-hmm. Like I'll help like come up with schedule for themselves or uh Sometimes it's just something as like reminding them to take their medicine every day, uh, reminding them to eat or whatever. And I don't require those people to address me as as sir. Like I'll always wait until it feels right to them. Like there's always a point when they realize that they're uncomfortable calling me Brian because like it's out of respect or whatever. And they'll usually come to me and say, what do you, can I, you know, you mean this much to me. I, I, I want to respect you or honor you by calling you this. And then I'll, I'll go with it. But I, I've never demanded someone call me anything other than Brian. <laughs> so that always has always, always worked for me. I, I can truly respect that. And I admire that. Honestly, if you weren't that way, I probably wouldn't have come to you to Help me out with this. <laughs> if you were yeah, like, any we, other we, way, known each other. yeah, like you and I have known each other, like I said, for four years, and yeah. you've never called me anything but Brian, which yeah. is perfectly great because, like, I, I really, I really like you. I really, I think you're really great, and I enjoy your company. And you know, it, it it is what it is. Yeah, and what you said, like taking things slow. Me, when it comes to um, meeting people, and I am in the market to date and stuff. I find myself asking the question, like, hey, do I bring this up? Or do I sit back and see if I even like the person first? Because 
even if I just sit back and see if I like the person, we might get along great, make some moves, and then come to find out they're like, okay, I'm not into this at all. And no, mm -hmm. and this is such an important part of my life. It would be hard for me to continue on in a relationship that benefits me, that, that fulfills me yeah. in the areas that I need to be fulfilled. Yeah, so, definitely. Okay. Like when, when you rush into things, like there's things you, you miss out, like it's harder to really have a serious conversation about boundaries and expectations when like you meet someone and then like the next day you're like trying to call them and call them yours <laughs> because like <laughs> you don't know like what that person expects of you. You don't know what you, they don't know what you expect of them. Right. You don't know what their boundaries are. And like sometimes like people's boundaries are different. Mm -hmm. And so like, like for like, I guess like for my girlfriend, like she is okay with me helping out other subs. Like if I meet someone on Twitter or wherever, and I decide like I want to help this person, we're gonna help. I will, I will, I'll stop saying that. Let's say I meet someone and we want to help each other because they help me too. Um, and we say we want to help each other. That is completely within her boundaries. And but if I meet someone, I meet someone else, and I don't know them, but then I'm still trying to call them mine. They might really be uncomfortable with me talking to other people. And helping them the same way and then i don't know that until it happens <laughs> until like they see talking to someone else and then it's like a big thing and like and so like you don't know those things until you get to know people and and talk to them about what your boundaries and expectations are and so it's just a it's just a safer way to operate for me it is and sometimes you don't know that's why it's very important to find someone you can communicate with because sometimes you don't know that you like or do not like something until you experience yeah. it. Yeah, and, and so, that's, that's, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and so you should be able to feel comfortable enough to say, hey, this is not okay. This is not cool at all. And the person should be able to respect that and not try to, if they're a um, dom or a top and say, oh, well, no, you have to respect it anyways because I'm yada, 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 boo, boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm just being honest, because, and that's why um, I'm real careful about people that try to um, doms or quote unquote doms or wannabe. I don't know how to categorize these people yet, but that <laughs> try to minimize their wants and needs just yeah. to get closer to me because it makes me think that when later on down the line they're going to try to make me do what they want after yeah. I've already established like hey no this isn't cool in the beginning they'll try to make me do it after I've let my guard down and I've put um and I've developed this relationship with them with them yeah yeah and you know sometimes that that can that works both ways, but I see it more from from doms. I think being a dom is just a it's a it comes with a lot of masculine energy. Like people associate power with masculinity, which is stupid, but they associate like power and dominance with masculinity. And I think what also comes with masculinity is all like the really horrible things, like not showing emotion. <laughs> not uh, feeling things mm -hmm. and so like some people think that to be the best dom is to have no emotions Ooh. and which is really unhealthy and it's really not only is it unhealthy it's unsafe because um, for me like I don't like to play when I'm angry and in order for for that boundary to be uh, met or or honored, I have to first admit when I'm angry, <laughs> and and not like use the people I play with as like punching bags because it's unfair and it's unsafe. Like I have to be in control of myself and 
my emotions and my feelings before I play. Because in that environment, like the first thing you have to do is create a safe environment, a safe space for your partner to be able to open up. But to do that, you have to open up first and you have to be in a safe place emotionally yourself. But if you're always closed off and you never express yourself, you don't know where that safe space is. And so it's really not healthy. So yeah, you're you're right. Like being emotional is something that even doms need to do. I think even more, even more so. I couldn't agree more. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> I really, I could not agree more. I. I so, can't, it's hard yeah. for me to allow someone in my space in that way if they cannot be open to me about their emotions. Yeah. It's just and I I think that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. It's a harder way to operate because like I said before, sometimes you just want to throw yourself at people because you, right. you're convinced that you'll no one you'll never meet anyone that's like that again ever again. But it's not true. And so I think doing it that way is a much safer and better way to to do it. Yeah, and also from my perspective, like how can I make sure that you're being fulfilled if I don't know what's going on, if I'm left in the dark, that I'm left guessing and when this doesn't work out, I'm beating myself up because, well, dang, I'm doing wrong. I'm terrible. What the hell? And it's just, no, yeah. you're not communicating with me. But yet me being me, I'm going to put it on myself anyway. So, Yeah, I've noticed that a lot of, a lot of, I'll say most of the submissives that I've come across, like, have this thing where they, like, carry the weight of the world on their shoulders. Like, they're... They feel like every bad thing that happens is, is their fault. And so when you live like when you're their top or, the, or their dominant, when you live in a place where you don't express yourself and you don't tell them how you're feeling, what's going on, they'll take every bad emotion or all the bad energy as their fault. And so, like, the only way to, like, to not, to prevent that is to be open about your emotions and your feelings and, and just say, no, it's not you. I had a bad day. This person said this and this person said that. And you know, then the train was late and I'm just, like, feeling inadequate. Whatever it is, like, it's better to be open and, and honest about your emotions so that they can take the cue and then also be open and honest about theirs. So that everyone is happy, everyone's free, and everyone's relaxed. And yeah. good. So. So yeah. So next, do we have a next topic? I know we do. We do. Um, I guess we can talk about all the cool stuff we're we're working on. <laughs> oh my what, gosh! Yeah, what pe what they can expect from us over the next few months? Nothing. Don't expect nothing but these podcast episodes. That's all you can expect is these podcast episodes, and you're gonna love them. <laughs> no, but um, I expect I want to have podcast related more people on from various backgrounds to talk about their experience and share stories. Uh, content, just content that feature black folks in kink that's all i really care about providing because i yeah. it's hard for me to find it and anytime i do it's always because they have that one token black person yeah and i i'm sorry I know a couple of white folks gonna listen and da da da, but I just don't have time to have y'all all up in my porn. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sick of y'all. Like, <laughs> just I I cannot go through a search. I cannot go through anything without seeing a white and and it's like, come on now. This is the ebony tag section. 
get, get it together. <laughs> get it to freaking gather. So I am looking for that space that I feel is just so desperately needed. Yeah, it is. Like, like I guess like we talked about briefly earlier, like the lifestyle can be really isolating. And so like as like a last ditch effort, you like turn to the internet to, to feel like you have a place or just to, you know, to look at stuff. And then you see, and then you see that like there's no one that looks like you and no one that you can relate to or no one that would understand your experience. And so like what I really want to do is like create a space for any marginalized people, specifically black people, to feel safe and like they have a place to just meet and congregate and learn and ask questions and just be their naturally wonderful black selves and still be kinky. And so that is my goal for this podcast and, and later on, you know, the website and whatever else we can think of. And so that's what I want to see happen. Like I, like you said, I'm tired of seeing white people everywhere we go and <laughs> every in everything that we do, they are everywhere. And so they're great and wonderful and you know, I I learned a lot from them, but I think it's time that we branch the fuck off. We get, yeah, we get we, <laughs> take, we take the spotlight and give our people somewhere that they can go to because their experience is completely different from ours. Completely different. And I want to be able to navigate a space and not have someone come up to me and ask me to be their dom or whatever. And I'm like, do you not know me? Did you not read anything about me? Like, what the hell? Get the away from me. I will cut you. Like, this is the thing. This is, this is, I should have a shirt, but that's how I feel a lot of times. I'm like, I am just too annoyed for this. Yeah, Back you know, if, if you had a shirt, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> Because like I go on like my I go on like my little girl's um like her pet profile or any other profile she has she'll put like in explicit terms big giant huge letters banners that say I am not a dom don't ask me to dom you and they still ask and it's always like middle aged white men who are doing the asking despite them knowing that she's not into it. And so, like, I want to create a space where Black women don't have that pressure of knowing that they'll have to reject 20 middle-aged white men <laughs> who, are, <laughs> who are propositioning them every time they step out the door. I and could, so, And yeah. honestly, maybe we'll talk about this later, but it's one of the reasons why... Um, meeting people has been really hard for me because I don't feel comfortable going in their spaces. I don't. I Yeah. I don't. And I honestly I have every reason not to feel comfortable. You do. Every you do like reason. Yeah, I've been to I've only been to a few meetups. And one was like mostly white people. And I got really tired of having to like turn down white couples who wanted me to be the bull and they're like cuckold fantasies mm -hmm. which is like something i'm like really uncomfortable with. it's a hard no like it's, i will not under any circumstances ever be okay with doing that even if they know that they still ask like they think that they're so amazing and <laughs> so wonderful that i won't be able to say no or they think that they're just entitled to it like they think they're entitled to my space and entitled to my body and entitled to everything about me. And I hate it. And so the other good together I went to was all black folks and it was amazing and wonderful and free and everyone respected my boundaries. I didn't have to worry about like rejecting people who wanted me to be the, the bull in their cuckold fantasies. And it was perfect. And so I want to create more of that. I want to do that on a much bigger and much grander scale. So that's a really big goal of mine. Like another one is that like black women especially aren't given in the BDSM community aren't given the space or they're not given they're not treated softly. Like all the black women are used as like pain sluts and like 
<laughs> the the and like punching bags. And so like if you look up and you see any kind of BDSM form with, with black women, they're not being treated as softly as some like the the white starlets or the white porn stars. And so I want to create a space where black littles and baby girls and princesses can actually come feel like princesses and baby girls and littles and not just pain sluts. And so that's a big, 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 big goal of mine. Because I, I, I just, because I know, I know with this podcast and us getting out, they're going to be like, oh, well, why do you have this space? And I'm like, and, and me, me, I'm like, because if I enter your space, I'm going to want to fight you. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> That's why. So to, see, so that way, you don't have to interact with me. I don't have to interact with you. I can be me, and I can enjoy myself and my time and just, like, yes, be treated like a princess. Be treated like a doll. Like, have the aftercare that I need. I freaking need this space. Yeah, like, all, like... I guess like I'm a I'm a daddy dom and so like all of my stuff is most of my expertise is is focused on that and so like and even in online communities if I look at it I look at like the pictures and and the the scenes and and the movies and everything is just filled with like really really young looking thin white women and it's all done to like a pastel or, <laughs> or sepia <laughs> filter. And like, that's not how real life is. And so like, I want the black women that I know and the ones who are important to me and the ones that I love who don't look like that to be able to feel the same way that they do. Like to feel like they're little and delicate and precious and and great and so yeah it makes me sad that like I, I don't see like i don't see big girls i don't see dark girls i don't see <laughs> i don't see older women because older women are little too and princesses and everything else mm -hmm. and you never ever ever see them represented in anything you look at so it's all like young looking really thin white girls and i'm just kind of over it and it's just what I'm, I'm not interested in. It. Like, uh, part of it is just like I want to make the stuff I want to see, <laughs> so <laughs> because I can't find it. And so, like, I just I, I was like, like, forget it. I'll do it myself. And is really kind of how I feel. We're talking about black women being littles. Like, I I am also a big advocate for black male subs. Like, yes, Ryan thank you. Will tell thank you. you. I'm like, thank look, you. you got too many women up there. We gonna have to come together and get some black male subs. Yeah. We gonna have to do something. So we're gonna have blind spots. It just is how it is. However, I try to make a conscious effort to seek out people who live the lifestyle differently than me. And yeah, Ryan does the same thing. And the thing about it is that it's gonna take some time because what we've realized is that. It's not that they're not out there. It's that they don't, they don't feel, feel safe enough to yeah, come exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. They don't feel safe to come out. So it's like we have to earn everyone's respect to able to, to be able to feel comfortable to come out, to come on our podcast, to, you know, write on our website or whatever. We have to um, earn that. And that's going to take some time. It is. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're definitely going to do our very, very best to be as inclusive and diverse as as possible and include like everybody from all walks of life uh, I when i say that i mean black people yeah. <laughs> 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 I, and y'all can come in and technical and be like people of color i'm gonna say black like i yeah. fight me <laughs> yeah i like because <laughs> that's yeah go ahead but there is like there is no one in the BDSM community who is more ignored, more forgotten, and more mistreated, and more than black male subs. Yeah. Like, they, you cannot find them anywhere. You can't. <laughs> there's no pictures. Mm -hmm. There's no blogs. There's no tumblers. Well, that's not, there's no, let's just say that it's They're, they're not, hard to find. Yeah, it's hard to find. They're hard to find. They're very yeah. hard to find. There's, like, they're hidden. 
And then when you do, they, they're not comfortable coming out and talking about it. So what we want to do is create a space where they can come and be open and meet people like them. And so they feel like the world is not so small and that they're not so isolated and that they're not alone. And then when they, when they do come out, there'll be people who have their back and people who want to listen to them and then people who will take care of them. Yes. And so that's what, that's a, a really, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a really, really, really important thing to me, like for me personally, because I've come across like a couple of black male subs and who have come to me like personally and like, don't, they ask me not to say anything, don't, you know, don't talk about it, don't tell anybody, but that's how they identify. And I feel really bad that they have to live their lives undercover like that. Or even further, like they have to pretend like they're Dom to get any kind of- I was just about to say they have to pretend that they're Dom, which adds a very uh, dangerous element. Yeah. To- A very, it's, yeah. It's not cool at all, but then it's like, what, what else can, can they do? do? Yeah. yeah, what can you do when one image is praised and the other is just like, non-existent and just basically spit on like what 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 really can you do mm -hmm. so ooh, we have a lot to talk about and a lot to work on <laughs> we but it's, it will, it's gonna make for some really great podcasts and some really great content that people are gonna really be able to learn a lot from and really get into so hopefully we open a lot of eyes and we give a lot of ears rather and we give all of you people I guess like the five or the five or six people who are gonna listen to this. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you five, if you five, six people retweet, get it out there because it could turn from five to yeah. six to like do what you got to do if you like it. Yeah. If not, then you could just ignore us and please ignore <laughs> us. Don't come, don't come to me with no bull. Don't, please yeah. don't, don't. Yeah, we're always here for you know civil debates or civil conversations. Even I'm up for like a heated <laughs> or a serious discussion, but I don't want to argue with anybody. So keep it to yourself if that's your intention. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just more of a, if you can't keep it cute, keep it to yourself because I will tell you to go fuck yourself and then you and block you. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is 100% that is 100 sure she will say that. <laughs> and you just I, I'm, I'm sure that. she's been close to telling me that. So <laughs> it's, she will absolutely say that. So be careful. <laughs> So I guess that concludes our first episode. Yeah, that was great. So, that was so much fun. And um, we'll get even better at it over the over time. I know. So everyone, you can find us on Twitter at kinknor.com. We have a website, kink-nor.com. I'm working on that now, trying to get some articles. If you feel like writing a piece or anything like that, please like let us know. Share. Um and yes. we'll Get you on the side if you want to be a guest. Let us know. Yeah, tweet us, DM us, email us, send us smoke signals. Yeah, or pigeons. like carrier carrier pigeons. Right. Yeah, like, <laughs> like uh, whatever, anything you could think of. Like, get us the message, and we like we said, we want everyone to feel represented and everyone to feel safe. So we want to talk to everybody. Like, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be experienced. You just have to be. And if you're interesting and you have a great story, we want to talk to you. Yes. So and I think I covered. Oh, yeah. We I said Instagram, Tumblr. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I, we have it. I just am not 100 percent sure. What, well, Instagram, you just post pictures, but I'm still trying to navigate, feel my way. Yeah. On how I want to use best utilize those mediums. Um, yeah, that's where you can. I think I named them all. Where you can yeah, them. I think that's. I think you named like every social media outlet ever. Except so. for my Twitter. Um, my Twitter. <laughs> that's right. The most know, important right? Twitter is your Twitter. Right. Uh, it's Shay S H E A underscore Nor N O I R. So it's a brand new Twitter account. So if you want to reach out to me, I I'm trying to get into the habit of using it and be more open about what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with. It is a working progress. So But that's why we have that's why we have the podcast and the website so that people like you can feel safe. And I want everyone to be able to take the journey with you because I think it's really relatable and really important. I don't see anyone online who's going through who's at the same part of the journey as you do speaking openly about it so like what you're doing is very brave and very cool and very important and so like i hope that the people 
are open to taking this journey with you. Yes. And just, oh, I just already know. Like, you know, you know how you just <laughs> like, I already know I'm opening up myself up to some boo. So I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Y'all going to follow me and somebody going to catch me on the wrong day. And y'all just going to have to mute me because I'm going to go off. <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm, just, you know, I'm just I'm just letting you know right now because this is something that's like very close to me and it is it's hard for me to kind of open up and get comfortable with everything that I have to deal with it's all brand new and it's stuff that I've been taught that you yeah. know no you just don't we, yeah we were all there we were all where you're at right now right. I promise <laughs> like for me like I'm like textbook overshare <laughs> so like i will answer any question you have no matter how personal <laughs> it is so like use some discretion like don't ask me anything unless you want like the real honest <laughs> true true answer so if there's something you're scared of finding out don't ask me <laughs> so, or if you're scared about somebody else finding out don't you yeah. just yeah don't come this way because yeah this community is small tiny this community is tiny like we all we all know each other good and bad <laughs> so like <laughs> good bad and the ugly yeah oh, so yeah. like messing up once can ruin everything forever so yeah Not we'll talk about that can sometime grow and change, of course of course but people are people there it goes yeah I guess we should stop before before yeah, we say before we put something our crazy. Mouth and then next thing you know, yeah, on the not. first show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for coming on this journey with us, and we hope you stick around for a long, long time. And we hope you t we tell your tell your friends, tell your brothers and sisters and cousins and your parents. So, <laughs> tell, tell everybody, tell everyone. Your parents, I love. Yeah, tell like random people on a train. Tell your coworkers. Tell the bank teller, tell the people that bring you your cheeseburger at, at, at McDonald's, tell the waitress at like Cheesecake Factory, tell we the get people, it. We get tell it. everybody, right? <laughs> everybody you can. So thank you again. And we hope, we hope you stick around for the next one. So have a great night. Bye.